Hello everyone. I hope everyone is doing well uh, and keeping safe. So this time I am back with another Wednesday talks. It's on CICS. So it's going to be a quick refresher. So unlike other refresher videos that I have made on COBOL, DB2, JCL, VZAM and TSO and ISPF. So many of them have requested to make a quick refresher on this. So here here is it for you okay so without wasting any time so we'll get started so first I'll be explaining on the topics or agenda that I would be covering as part of this so first I'll be giving why in uh, CICS than difference between batch and online we're going to talk map map set symbolic physical map transactions task multi task what is multi threading pseudo conversation cursor position technique what are control programs what are the different tables that we use and we'll go in dive into the in depth into the application programs we'll look at some uh, examples of the different applications programming in the CICS and the exception handling we'll see and how do we connect to the CICS environment how do we define a map install a map or uh, new do a new copy of the programs how and uh, visa files make an entry into the online terminal and how do we open a file how do we close a file and then we'll also talk about uh, the link xcdl so tsq tdq and many other so there is a typo you please ignore so link uh, xctl uh, tsq tdq and many other topics that we are going to cover as part of this okay so the first coming to the first part of the introduction CICS as many of you know like it's a customer information control system so or it is called as a transaction processing system and we call it as an OLTP okay and uh, these are the uh, some stats that's been I've taken from the IBM so where uh, uh, it says like there are more than 1.5 billion lines of CICS code that has been existing it may be more than 1.5 billion existing okay so CICS gateways are used in web applications so CICS now interacts with the web applications and transmit the data the data exchange happens there and over 30 billion transactions are executed every day right so this is one of the highest revenue generating software I can say uh, in the present uh, stage it, it's been there from a couple of uh, decades I can say I can say still it stands in the queue of the high uh, highest generated revenue software any mainframe application is mainly divided into batch and online so multiple batch environments multiple envir uh, online environments can be created for different modules uh, large size applications so okay so uh, what do we hear much in the CICS so when we say mainframe it's a job and transactions job is nothing but it's continuously contains the completely the batch uh, programs so it uh, mostly the batch shops runs at the night time and transaction is nothing but it's a providing an instant results like an online okay so let's talk about the difference between batch and online first when you say batch it is a file based approach and runs it in a batch cycle normally end of the day and it processing is a single and response time is batch uh, normally it takes a longer time so when you're pro uh, processing 5 million transactions 10 million transactions at the end of the day so the job that takes is a longer time but which is faster than any of the technology okay so the resource utilization is less and the examples I can say like uh, creating an a payroll uh, payroll applications that are running something payment uh, related at the month and uh, month in statements uh, for your the transactions that you have done with your ATM uh, swipe cards or on online banking so the all those treatments that are generating reports so that these are part of uh, comes part of the batch okay coming to the online it is a terminal based you log into the CSS terminal you enter the transaction so then uh, you operate so you give a send a request and you get back the response which is an instant results uh, the concurrent users so the single program can be copied uh, to multiple users from a different locations and uh, it gives you the results required example uh, is ATM so the back-end operation teams if you if you're working in a banking or the financial projects not only banking and finance it can be an insurance railways I mean airways so at the back end they have the CIC screens and they 
give the input and they get the results of that and uh, mostly in the back office operations in the banks so they have so depends on the stakeholders that the applications are using the manager screens will be provided okay so this uh, this is a big, uh, difference between the batch and online okay note in an entire mainframe applications so regardless of experience you starting from a fresher to 20 years 30 years ex, uh, experience who is working on the mainframe so he uh, they hear uh, words jobs transactions if it is a batch programming jobs if it is online then it's a transactions okay so that's uh, uh, that's I mean it's been I'm hearing this from many years since started from my career so maybe in the future also I do you'll hear this okay so online system uh, consists of a transaction so now we are literally entering into the actual things of the CICS so the online system consists of a transactions what is a transaction Transaction is nothing but it's a logical unit of work. Uh, let's take an example: inserting an employee details, or updating an employee details, or deleting an employee details. So everything is a transaction. Okay. Uh, transactions are considered to be as a two types. One is user-defined transactions. If I'm defining, if I'm writing a CSS program, so I need to write my user-defined transaction. Okay, system defined transactions which are inbuilt. So, based on uh, some, uh, like for example, I need to uh, log in. CESN is a system defined line. CSF, log off. So, like this, we have n number of our transactions. CDF, okay, the, uh, these are like uh, system defined transactions. Uh, either user defined or it can be a system defined transaction. Uh, is formed between a uh, one to four alphanumeric characters, but in general we take four bytes uh, to define the transaction. Examples that you can see: TR01, 0203 are user defined and coming to the system defined. Uh, these are supplied by a common repeated task within the online environment. Okay. Examples you can see like CMT, CDA, CDF, CCI, CECI, CEBR, CESN, CESF, CSSN. Okay, so these are the system defined transactions that we uh, see in this uh, online. Okay, uh, we'll, we'll talk in detail. Okay, so here, as I said, a unit of work that is done as an atomic operation, so that is considered to be as an uh, transaction task. An instance of execution of a particular transaction type is nothing but it's a task. That is one execution of a transaction with a particular set of data, usually on uh, behalf of particular used. So, a task can be like multiple copies that will be shared across the different terminals. Okay. So, if there are one transaction that is executed by 100 users, then 100 tasks are created. Okay. Now, let's look at the concept of multitasking. What exactly it means? Multitasking means the operating system allows more than one task to be executed concurrently. Um, one person may be in Alabama, one person may be in a Texas, one person may be uh, in a Florida, one person may be in Chicago, New York. So the ATMs are located in the different states and uh, they wanted to withdraw some amount. So when you are inserting your card into the ATM machine, so at the same time, a person who is residing in Texas and a person who is residing in uh, Chicago, so the same, uh, they have their, I mean, when the program pulls it so it has it pulls the same transaction and multiple copies has been shared to the different location and uh, it got uh, it gets executed concurrently so that's me that's nothing but multitasking okay so in similarly multi-threading so is a semi uh, system environment where the task been sharing the same program under the multitasking environment basically multi-threading is a subset of multitasking since it concerns tasks which uses the same program right it's like a xerox i can say you have a original copy maybe a original book so if you want a duplicate of it what you do you do a xerox of it right so under multi-threading environment a program is shared by several tasks concurrently for each task the program must work as if it were executing instruction exclusively for each task therefore it requires a special consideration such as reentrancy okay so what is re-entrancy? A re-entrant program is a program which does not modify itself so that it can re-enter to itself. Okay. And quasi, so re-entrancy and CS itself is it's called as a quasi recent re-entrancy. Okay. Okay. Uh, modes of communications in CSS conversation. 
So send a message to the terminal, wait for a response and uh, resources are utilized until uh, we, we get a response and the waiting time is more. So you're trying to send a map uh, or a, maybe the program. So you're trying to send a map and you are waiting for the response. So that means the resource are holding there. Okay, so that is one way. Another is a pseudo conversation. What happens here? You send a message to the terminal and the control is sent to other task. Okay, so it will have a return command. It uh, holds some uh, transaction to the com area and based on that, it it's in backs. So as soon as the user responds with any of the action identifier key, so the transaction reinitiates and the resource is open and it, uh, it does the operation that is required. It is an optimal way of utilizing the resources. Whereas in a conversation mode, so the resources are occupied and it is not doing. Suppose you have sent a map and uh, it asking for you the uh, some uh, some input. If you are not entering any input, so still the resource holds in the conversation mode. Okay, uh, so that means it, the waiting time is more and the resource utilization is more there. If you are programming in a pseudo conversation mode, you are making an effective optimal utilization of the resources. So mostly if you're working in a real time, right, so you might have seen most of the programs are pseudo conversation mode. So if you're a refresher, so be note that so pseudo conversation programs are being used in real time. And the control programs and the tables uh, that are there in the CICS one is FCP, so we call it as a file control program. And the table associated to FCP is FCT. Similarly, task control program. So these are like already pre-returned uh, system has provided. So based on uh, what we are going to use, so these are being connected. Okay, PCP program control program. Or we, uh, the table associated to is PPT. Similarly, TCP we have, similarly SIP and TDP and TSP. Okay, uh, CICS users, who uses a CICS system actually, right? So, uh, normally we have an, uh, batch programmers and the online programmers in the real time. So, in the similarly we have a QA team, so where they check the screens. So, but this is coming as part of the development. But in general, in real time, once your development is completed, who are going to use the screens, right? The business who is users who update the data or browse the data from the databases, the data entry operations who create a transactions, right? So these are the two things and it normal uh, customers. So example, uh, the example that I can give is ATM. So I'm a customer. I am. I have an uh, account in Bank of America, Bank of New York. Uh, so different banks, HSBC, Morgan Stanley. So I'm using the ATM. So I'm a customer of that, right? So indirectly, I'm using the CSS screen. But front end, it may be some web application, but at the back end, so those will be connected to CICS, right? The back end processing of a CICS is the data that is used in the batch system is from online or another batch system. So whatever the data that you are getting uh, entering online, right? So that is being stored and at the end of the day that being that data is being pulled by the batch system and they process for the reports. So most of the CICS transactions are like inquiry which are used to browse the data in the VSAM file or DV2. So if you are fetching some information using a CIC screen, so from there are only two options. One is using a VSAM file or it can be a DV2 table. So the rest like we pull the data and we store it into some of the queues and we fetch some other. That's a different concept. But ideally, uh, the physically the data is stored either of these file systems. Either it's a VSAM file or it can be a relational file. That is DB2 tables. Okay. Um, in CICS, uh, what are the different types of programs uh, normally we come across in real time? So one is like an inquiry. So if you want to check the balance uh, of your account, so you type your account details and uh, it gives you the results. And the next is a data entry. You want to fill some details. So maybe you wanted to update your the account uh, details, like you have changed from one address to another address. So, so that kind of a uh, data entry, or it can be something. Uh, some new account has been created, so they wanted to operator wanted to add a address, or uh, uh, the person has visited to the bank and he told like I am changing my phone number. Can you please update? Okay, so 
oh, at the back end operations team so they can uh, log in there and they can update it okay the file maintenance so and the next is a menu driven okay so these are the four uh, the commonly uh, used programs I can say we will will come across uh, this if you're already working in real time you might have seen these categories right so online users will interact uh, to the online system with the help of a screen right then screen is developed with map set map set is nothing but it's a collection of maps map is a collection of fields in order to develop map set maps fields we need to work with the assembly of macros. Uh, we need to write the BMS. What is BMS? It stands for the basic map support. It is called as an assembler macros. So that's we will we'll look into that. To define the map set, DFHMS SD uh, macro is used. And similarly for map, DFHMDI is used. Similarly for the field, DFHMDF. And map set is identified by the map set. Uh, map name is identified by the map name. And field is identified by the field name okay so if you look at this uh, simple snapshot so this is the complete map so where uh, can you identify which one is a map set which one is a map and which one is a field all right uh, this is the map set and this is a ma uh, map and the map name is emp inquiry and the map set name is this and uh, the field is this okay and rest are like parameters that we use and uh, if you are using a PI, PL Bhavan, so you will be writing the PL Bhavan. And uh, since I am using a COBOL, so that will be used. And the size is 24 by 80. So normally 24 rows and 80 columns is the size of the screen that we code. And the uh, rest of the things are different attributes. So normally in the column 1, if you look at this, this is nothing but it's a label name. Either map set name, map name or a field name will be giving. And in the column 10, it's an operation code. So that is uh, the macros that we are going to use. Either map set name, uh, map name or the field name. And uh, 17 from 17, all the uh, parameters that get started in the 72 uh, will write the continuation. If this map set... Uh, need to be continued uh, with a different if we feel like you have all different parameters that need to be written so you will be continuing with the 72 so this is about the map set or define creating a new map okay right the rules uh, rules or map set name map name field names are user defined name must be formed between 1 to 8 alphanumeric so normally we prefer to take an 8 bytes and we do it any program must be coded in PDS. If you are creating a map, so you have to store it in a PDS. If you are writing a program, you have to store it in a, a PDS. Okay. For assembler macros, uh, separate PDS memory is coded. Uh, for example, this is a uh, uh, here we are storing the program and we are using a map. Okay. So hierarchy of a screen. So this is the hierarchy. Uh, first, you need to in order to develop a screen. First, you will be seeing a map set. Then you will be seeing a map name. Then field. In the field also, you have two things. One is a text field, so which is fixed. One is a variable fields. Text field is like okay. So these are the employee details. So bank transaction details. So insurance details. So railway reserve. I mean airway lines uh, status. So those, so those of the those kind of uh, fields are at us. Uh, it's it's a fixed field, okay. So and variable fields. In variables, you have enterable, so that is unprotected. Non-enterable, that is a protected field. So okay. So this is the hierarchy of a screen checklist. When you are creating a map, so the, the make sure you have written the screen headers. Unnamed field with initial values of every name field has headers. Named fields for every data that is going to be communicated between terminal and the program. Unprotected fields to allow terminal use to enter data. And the stop of fields to stop and user beyond the maximum size. When enter, right, suppose you have given a field, so field A and field B. If you have to manage, like uh, the field is, if the cursor is placed at the end point, and if you are not controlling so that's a bad programming right so you need to use that ASCIP is a uh, every protected field uh, error messages in the bottom of the screen just make sure you display some message some if the action identifier is not giving any response okay function keys and its description in the end and uh, most of the applications number and amount fields are alphanumeric in the screen uh, so design uh, whereas there are converted into numeric in the application programming right Static cursor positioning with IC for one field and F set for the mandatory field. So these are the checklists that we need to make sure whenever you are creating a map. 
okay so the different ways of placing a cursor onto the screen so when you or uh, display your screen uh, display your map onto the screen so the first initially the placement where your cursor need to be placed right either on the first field second field or at the bottom so that need to be uh, that we need to do right so how many ways of placing the cursor uh, one is by the map so which is a static and uh, there is a dynamic and the next is a relative so the next two are like uh, programming okay static so the static cursor positioning with ic initial cursor in the map design so where do you define that is defined at the field so you have the field uh, where uh, you specify a trip unprotected offset ic when you see ic that means the initial cursor will be placed to that specific field the next one is a dynamic cursor positioning the dynamic cursor positioning uh, by moving minus 1 to the length field this is being controlled from the program okay and also cursor option in send map command so how so let's look at the example so if you look at here move minus 1 to the length field x x y is send map map set and the cursor so that's how we do it what is relative relative cursor positioning by cursor the value in the send map command so this is something we use with the send map okay what next note it is always better to use dynamic cursor positioning while error is noticed and terminal in user is notified with the error messages okay sometimes program has to read the cursor position on the screen to send help on the field uh, in this case eib caps on is used okay cposn is cursor position so based on the cursor position maybe i may write some logic right so if the if the in the fields if the user is not entering the complete records then if you are trying to fetch some records okay so based on that maybe i will be checking some length or maybe he is into which field so that actions can be taken care okay so this is the point that need to be noted okay what's next let's develop a screen using an assembler macro so how the screen should be the screen should be this way employee details employee id first name and this okay and uh, this is the map okay since i have told like okay we need to create this so now i have created the map and you can see uh, the map set name map and employee number so you can see uh, all the macros and the type equal to system so that means it will generate both a uh, symbolic map and a uh, physical map uh, so then map st stats and everything are there within the this one okay map set now next thing is a compile so when we compile this so in real time so maybe you will be uh, based on the systems that you are working on so they will be giving you some uh, maybe a jobs or if you are using any tools so where you just give your mention your map set so it will automatically compile and uh, then it will give you a uh, the output results will be the symbolic map and a physical map so symbolic map that we use it for the programming to send the data or receive the data so that kind of thing that we take it in the symbolic physical so it's a physical map that you see on the screen so symbolic map structure so after compiling uh, you'll be seeing this uh, uh, map structure so that is a uh, uh, for that employee uh, the screen that you have seen earlier so this is the structure that you will be uh, coming across and uh, you can see and uh, the next finally so you will be seeing uh, input output attributes so different different things that we will be seeing in the symbolic map okay so in the symbolic map so when you see with i so that means it's an input when you see this so a, a message one i right so i mean sorry employee inquiry i is there and then you have o so i mean employee inquiry o output input and output right so this is not but input receive the input data from the screen so when user enters the screen so the data is received into this group variable and when you want to send the data so then that uh, actually uh, the data need will we need, you need to pass the values to the output okay so wherever the value values are there so you need to pass into that output processed output is stored and thrown onto the back to the screen length it returns the length of the text entered attributes used to over the attributes mentioned during the map coding flag byte so these are the different uh, things that you will be uh, seeing across this you can see attribute uh, you can see length field okay so oh i i mean i length f 
So these are the things that you'll be coming across. Physical map. So this is nothing but it's a physical map. And uh, difference, if you ask me the difference between physical and symbolic, physical maps contains the object code. Symbolic maps contains, uh, it contains the variables. Okay, it is used by end user to interact with the system, whereas symbolic used by an application programmer. It is loaded in load lib, whereas it, this is loaded in copy lib. So it is generated by type equal to map, and symbolic map is generated when you are using type equal to desect. Right. So if you want to sh see that, okay, uh, anomaly spam desect when we use this, so it will generate. But if you want externally to be generated, so you can generate that as well. Okay. So that's about a uh, difference between what are the different ways of displaying a map. So normally you can simply display the map by display manually like uh, see defining the map and another is uh, from the application program. So these are the two ways and this is also commonly asked in interview question. Okay. So how do we get uh, into online regions that is into CICS. First we need to log in and then we need to uh, define or create the map set then you need to install and then you need to view the maps and let's connect to the mainframe and see how normally I have entered into this uh, so normally when you log into the CICS so you will be having a different terminals uh, L parse so based on that L parse so you need to uh, select the specific CICS environment okay so now you can see I have entered uh, I have logged into the CIC screen. So what is the first step? So you need to define your map and install. So normally uh, CEDA define map set name, uh, map set name something. Okay. So then uh, you will be defining some group. So you will be defining it. So once you, you define and you will be installing. And similarly, if you want to see the map. Okay. Normally we will type it as CZ sender map. Set. Okay. So now it is executing. So now you can see. So this is how we uh, got to uh, see the map. Okay. So this, if you look at here, uh, so when we uh, s compile the map, so one is of the physical map and other is a symbolic map. So this is how the symbolic map looks here. So you can see one is input and uh, other is output so if you want to uh, send receive a data from the map so that is uh, when I enter when we enter some data here so that is being received into these fields okay so either it can be in a name or uh, uh, whatever the fields that we have or if you want to send some data uh, back to the screen so with some results so then you can just enter uh, you need to pass to this specific field so that that data will be uh, shown onto this specific screens. I think uh, that pretty much about uh, uh, the normally uh, maps. So what happens in the real time? So maybe uh, sometimes we get a change to the screen. So maybe they wanted to add some more field onto the screen, right? If you look at here, uh, you have two or three fields, right? So. Um, then maybe the you got a new requirement to change uh, adds first name and the last name so you need an, uh, another field to be defined so then in that case you need to create uh, update the map you need to define I mean normally you do uh, you need to install that map and you need to execute and you need to test it right so that's what we do so these are the different changes that we uh, get normally in the real time Okay, so now let's understand in depth uh, transactions or system defined uh, that we have just seen CEDA defined, CMT, CCI, and CS, CF. User defined, normally it's a four bytes. Now coming back to our point of displaying a map manually. So, what we have done so far, we have uh, created a PDS member in that we have written a BMS program, then compiled, so entered into the online, then we have defined, uh, so registered the map set. When we give the CEDA defined, it registered the map set into the PPT table. And uh, PPT is nothing but it's a processing program table. Uh, CSS supply table which will contain all the online programs 
if it is if that map set is not making in entry into this table when you try to display that map it will never display so this is a uh, another point that we need to note okay then we need to install the map set that is cemt install or cemt new copy okay that is to copy so normally we use uh, cemt new copy so that a new copy is a new copy of the object program from branch to online so as i said when we compile so you got physical map and you have got sy symbolic map the symbolic map we are mapping to it okay so we are mapping an entry into the ppt okay. initiate the transaction that is using a uh, system defined transaction id right so if you have a transaction so see easy a send a map map name and the map set name the map is dis displayed finally we need to log off so so the important uh, tables and how they work so one we have one is pct it will contain the transactions id and uh, corresponding programs and then we have ppt process program table it has all the program names and the corresponding load libraries fct it has all the physical file names in the file names rct all the resources uh, like uh, when you are especially working with the db2 so the plan should be making an entry into this rct okay so for example so you have entered some transaction so what happens when you enter the transaction what is the first step happens so it makes an it will search and it will go to the pct and it will check for that but uh, in the pct table so for each and every transaction there is an uh, associated program will be there or uh, by picking the program it goes to the uh, ppt table okay so it will check okay so this is this program load library is there or not okay map that success so similarly if this particular program is having an a uh, file okay so then it goes to the fct and it will check whether uh, uh, this particular file names entry is there or not similarly if you are working with the db2 so then it will check for the plan in the rct if this is there so then it will give you the results if not the it will throw an error Okay, that's too danger okay so we need to make sure everything is defined installed uh, made a new copy everything is done so these are the the commonly that thing and much must uh, needed to know about this okay so the application coming to the application programs we know that CSS is a customer information control system CSS is a command level language which consists of set of commands coded in procedure division as follows so normally uh, in the db2 refresher part so when i was explaining when you're writing an sql query so we start with exec sql and then end exec right so since that is the third uh, external one subsystem that you're using similarly ci cs when you are using in the cobar program you write a statements exec cs cs and exec and in between you'll be writing a set of statements or a commands okay okay so based on the requirements we use as follows so it may be displaying a message to the user or receiving an, a message from the user or transferring a control from one program to another program or initiating a transaction from the program so the note type are very important when we design a css programs we must take a decision on what type of program we are going to code so this is this is the first step that we need to know so what is my program or if this is an existing program you got a request to uh, change so what i am doing so this is uh, this will give you uh, a quick refresh on that okay displaying a map using an application program first let's understand how a transaction works with an example okay uh if you are going to the atm the first step is, is it, you place a uh, your atm card uh, debit or credit card uh, then it asks you to enter your pin you enter the pin and once it is a uh, success it goes to the next screen third step as you mean your in, your pin is uh, correct and went to the next screen having different options like balance inquiry saving current withdrawal then fourth steps you have selected another option okay withdrawal so then another uh, program uh, hits up okay at the back end so the enter the amount withdraw is completed then the fifth step you will get your acknowledgement from the receipt so here you go all these individual steps or tasks merged together we are calling it as a transactions okay 
that is in order to call a map or a program we need the transaction id then only you can see that particular map if whatever uh, you are writing you are creating a map and you, you want to call uh, using it in the program but without transactions you cannot do any other operations okay sample program so display a simple message to the user uh, three steps involved you need to write a, co a code a cobalt program compile and register the programs and transactions into an online table so this is a simple program so what we are doing trying to do we are trying to uh, send uh, some data to the output so as I said so in the symbolic maps you will be having an uh, input and an output so symbolic map fields I have just written like this so input and an output field input if you are sending a data uh, onto the screen so you will be passing the data to the input if you are I mean sorry if you are receiving a data you will be getting into this if you are passing a data to the onto the screen so you should pass into the output so that's what we are trying to do so the data is being passed to the output and uh, uh, CIC is sent length so that will be sent to the screen so you need to compile so you need to make sure you have your uh, symbolic uh, uh, map library that is uh, basically it's a copybook library and you have your load leap and you have your uh, copy books if you are using in your program and uh, the finally the load lib okay if it is a db2 so you need to also mention the db2 then we'll also have the bind job that's going to be submitted. submitted so what happens register the program online log off from your present screen log on to CICS uh, define uh, first you are trying to define the program the define is successful and then next you need to install and install is successful then you have to define the transaction uh, of that particular program so then define successful and then initiate install the transaction so uh, uh, the transaction is successful now it's time to go live and display the map and see what happens right we'll see that okay I'm uh, trying to enter the transaction so now you can see uh, you can look at once as soon as I entered the transaction a map has been displayed here okay so uh, what it is asking so it is asking for the employee uh, number employee ID or a number to be entered here right so let's enter some number okay let's enter some 200 now you can see it has displayed some number let me enter 100 and see you can see there has been displayed so so what is happening so we are from where the data is being fetched right let's look at the back actually what we have done so uh, we have uh, written a map for that specifically so we have compiled and we have generated a a symbolic map and then we have written a program so within the program so now you can see this is a set of the code so we need to call that specific uh, map set that is there so with from the copy book and you also have an action identifier and other uh, macros that copy book CISS related that will call and then uh, the data is being fetched from the table so that means so uh, you need to write the SQL uh, statements here SQL DCL gen copy book I um, mean sorry SQL uh, that is employee and then SQL uh, error handling uh, in order to under uh, so if you look at here in CICS we use a DFH com area so to it's a further pseudo conversation if EIB com area length is greater than zero so then this and then so how the map is being sent initially so it's all the action identifier uh, F1 F2 F3 so then now initially so you are trying to if you want to send any message onto the screen so this is how it will be sent uh, into return so when the person uh, when someone enters the enter so as soon as they enter it goes to the process para what happens in the process para map is being received so whatever the values that you have entered there so that values are being received for example I entered 200 right so the 200 is being uh, are received okay so the 200 value is being received to the input i so that value is being moved to output again so then select employee number name this query is being executed and it is stored into the employee number host variables so that code is being moved and then it process then it's again checks for some conditions and again 
the map is being again send map data if you want to send only data you can send it and again you receive a map so this is also a pseudo conversation I can say and uh, if you look at the here there should be some transaction right TRAN okay uh, what is the transaction ID so MKF1 so the see with the same transaction ID I have entered back right that was a quick uh, I mean uh, I can say like the quick round of uh, execution or seeing the map the program how it is being done and how the data is being pulled everything right okay that's how that's about that okay uh, that cover that program has all everything like uh, uh, DB2 from where the table is being fetched and everything okay okay so now sending and receiving a map so the program to send and receive a map as we all know that uh, difference between so what exactly difference between send and receive just I'm trying to explain in a different way as we all know the difference between accept and display right accept means uh, get the data and display means show the data right in the same way CISS send will act like a display and uh, receive will act like a accept okay the symbol program so this is a symbolic program that's your written and then you're sending a map using this and what we are trying to do is you're trying to uh, calculate some data and you're trying to send it into the output field so this is basically you're receiving some data from the map and you're trying to calculate and you're trying to send back the map again so what are the steps that you follow like you need to define the map set install the map set then program a define install then you need to define the transactions and then you need to install the transaction so once so this is the first screen that will be displayed you enter the values and then after entering the values you get the results right so this is the different screens so back and forth that goes around okay so in order similarly you can uh, write a date and time so to display onto the screen so you have to use ask time and absolute time so that how you we use and this is uh, the format time and then finally we send the map so again you need to define install the map set program in the transaction and then this is how the screen will be displayed okay now let's understand the functions of a CEMT uh, if you are uh, trying to update the program so no need to uh, define and install multiple times again and again so instead of defining and installing again and again you need to try type this command cmd set program new copy so that's it so both define and install happens at a time and uh, if you want to kill any transaction so cmt in task task name and if you want to inquire about the transactions and program cmt i program the program name transaction transaction program name and the transaction name is also being used if you want to open or close any VSAM files also you have to use cmt i file name okay reading the data from a VSAM file so this is how the code that you write so exit css read the data sets in file name and uh, the same file you need to define and the same thing you need to install so similarly for the write so you will be writing this particular co code you need to identify the OID field length and from common exceptions uh, when you're working with the files concept that you get across is uh, duplicate records or no space uh, length error so those are the common exception that we see uh, now let's understand the dynamic reading as well so so when you wanted to uh, read a dynamic read so we use uh, this specific uh, piece of a code so read next read previous then reset browse so and browse okay and similarly uh, oh okay if you want to try to open a uh, open and close so normally we use emti file so uh, the logical file in that was given here and it should be mapped with the VSAM file and uh, similarly uh, you can see the snapshot that case here so now let's understand about the exception handling in real time what ha what is an exception something happened accidentally right so suddenly you are driving a car and your car is punctured so there is a so then it's time to repair right so so normally that is that's being uh, if you have a step knee so you place it and then you move around so that is an exception and those exception we need to handle and we have to prepare ourselves so 
so what are the different uh, things uh, ways that we handle uh, these exceptions uh, in CISSS handle no handle ignore and resp okay for the handle so the transfer the controls to the label so what we do is in procedure revision we re we write a different labels with a lot of exception conditions what we need to do if this uh, transaction id fails what happens do we, do we have any other transaction if some there is an issue with the data uh, if some uh, there is a match in mismatch with the record so what we need to do we need to write it in uh, some uh, history records or the exception record so those kind of a uh, handles that we do and we give a label and uh, we can write multiple conditions so up to I think multi or uh, 10 different conditions that we can use uh, within this but that particular piece of code is written in procedure division ignore uh, causes no action to be taken care if the condition specifies occurs in the program so for example uh, when you're trying to receive some data and if there is an a length issue so if you want to ignore that so you can write uh, ignore condition and length error so that's it similarly uh, alternate method to handle the uh, handle his uh, resp okay how this is being written is responsive code if the uh, based on the response code that we receive so based on that you can uh, 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 write uh, the logic accordingly okay so the passing a control from one program now we are entering into the new concept if you want to pass a control from one program to another program so then we use an uh, XCTL and link concepts okay what is XCTL? XCTL passes the control from one program to another program and uh, we expect it to return the control back to the original program okay it is mainly used for the menu driven programs or a screen based program data process to call program through com area or called as communication area and it doesn't own any resources a simple example here uh, so above is the syntax and this is a simple example the way the control is going to the program 2 and it process okay but the signal is not coming back whereas the link it transfer the complete program from one program to another program and get back the control original program automatically it is mainly used for validation of the programs and complex business functions and it holds the resources okay and XCTL is uh, much better than link compared by the if we consider the performance okay this is a simple example and uh, where you can see the link is going there come back right okay how data is passed through com area so normally uh, speaking uh, okay so in calling program the com area could be defined in a uh, working storage whereas uh, in the call program it must be defined in the linkage section that is a uh, DFH com area and what we use EIB com area link determines whether the com area was sent by the calling program or not uh, if it is greater than zero the com area was sent right and uh, if you look at this a simple program so linkage section dfh com area so if EIB com area length equal to zero then uh, we try to call the send map we have we are trying to send a map if not uh, perform some other action so this is also called as a pseudo conversation right okay so now let's look at the keys okay eib ad field contains the aid codes like uh, dfh aid dfh enter clear uh, dfh a functions like one f1 to f2 f3 and then uh, f1 to uh, f24 like function keys and values obtained in eib can be compared so if you look at here example uh, when it is three and method and uh, when you are entering this particular key and uh, it's a cancel method right CSF handle 8 uh, and you can see this particular uh, uh, hand aids can be I mean uh, this action identifiers can be written here and based on that action identifier you will go to the specific uh, uh, perf I mean module I mean you can say routine so there you will be writing a code and you it gets executed Okay, what is temporary storage? What are the different? I mean, normally the data that tra uh, that process in the programming. So we uh, have different ways. One is through com area and transaction work, work area, which is not used. So we'll we'll talk about uh, what are TDQs and TSQs here. Before that, we'll let's understand the concept of a queue. Queue is nothing but it is used to pass large volume of a data from one program to another program. That is similar to the file, and uh, especially when you are using an uh, 
page up page down logic so if you want to retrieve the data uh, from the files and if you want to display onto the screen right so normally what we were doing so maybe only one record that we were displaying but my requirement is to display uh, multiple records onto the screen so that's where this queues comes into the picture normally uh, when you read a file so maybe you only uh, can see only one field of information but using queues concepts you can display all those requ uh, all those records and here we use a paging uh, logics okay so queue is similar to the file which consists of uh, items items consist of fields fields consist of characters queue is identified by queue id queue id is what it's a combination of uh, user id and the transaction id so based on that these are uh, identified as ts queues and td queues what is TSQ? Uh, it's called as a temporary storage use and provided by the temporary uh, storage uh, control program. Where it is, it's there in the uh, DSP. It's a queue of a record that can be created, read, deleted by different tasks or a programs in the CICS. And TSQ is identified by the queue. Identified, as I said, it's a combination of 4 plus 4, 8 bytes. A record within a TSQ is identified by the relative position known as item number. As you can see, we can write uh, with uh, write queue, read queue, TS, delete queue, TS, right? So, a uh, simple example, write queue, TS, uh, queue, queue name, and the from. So, it fetches all the details, and then uh, based on the queue ID or uh, the queue name, so you can fit, display the record. Similarly, uh, TDQ. So we have intra partition uh, and we have extra partition uh, queue. Uh, here we have uh, two types what is uh, intra and uh, there is extra what happens here is uh, the items entered in a sequential order uh, without any item number so earlier we had an item number in the TSQ but here uh, we don't have any item item numbers TDQ allows only the sequential access uh, what happens when you fetch the records the read will destroy after the record is being successfully uh, TDQ uh, we, it must be uh, make an entry in the DCT table okay so that's the uh, another uh, that's the between I mean uh, I can say like TDQ allows write command to insert an items whereas a TDQ allows read command to retrieve an items and similarly TDQ allows delete command also write is there read is there and also or uh, I can say the delete is also there okay So that covers almost uh, most of the topics. Thank you so much. Uh, so if you do like this video, it's a complete refresher, I can say. So whenever you're attending for any interviews or uh, if you want to quickly refresh uh, the entire CSS, I hope this will be helpful to you all. Uh, wanted to say like it took a lot of uh, hours or I can say like uh, many, I mean, I've taken a lot of time to prepare this. If you do like this or if you have any suggestions, please uh, do write it in the comment section so that it may be if, I mean, it will be helpful to everyone. So whoever is working on the mainframe development. Thanks a lot. Have a wonderful day.